over when it is to me, Game Penguin 21 and today. Well, looks like it's time for a bit of a Twitter roundup video. Now, a lot of these tweets are tweets from videos that I wanted to do in the past, so I'm going to be covering a pretty wide range of topics from the last at least two-ish weeks. So, yeah, be prepared for that. Um, overall, a lot of these tweets are just ones that I've had saved for a little bit, and overall, I just, I don't know where else to put them, and I need a new supplementary Thursday video, and this was the best that I could come up with. So, yeah. I'm also not having, I'm probably, I'm also probably not having the best time in during recording this because of real life reasons, but overall I want to give you guys content and this is also a good way to get some of that uh, stuff out. It's free and sometimes better than therapy. Sometimes, not all the times. Get therapy if you need help, kids. Uh, don't be like me. Um, but, obviously, gotta do the quick shill. Uh, 1k by the end of the year is what I would like to hit, if you really think that that's fine. Um, thank you very much. I really do hope uh, and appreciate all of you. A like, comment, and subscribe is always important, uh, but not necessary. If you want to support me in other ways, links down to all the socials, including my music and stuff, down in the description below, as always. And, of course, I do stream on most of the weekends. Go to twitch.tv slash gamepang21 to make sure that you catch whatever it is that I do over there. Anyway, with that being said, let's get started with the good old X-Vault Gaming. And X-Vault and Eastwood... Uh, at X Vault Gaming and Clint Cult Eastwood, not Clint Cult Eastwood, uh, both seem to have some sort of weird ongoing feud or something like that, where one person will screenshot them and then like get retweeted in very weird ways. So I have a couple of those tweets for you today. Uh, the first one here is about the Spider Man, uh, or about like all the canceled Sony, uh, ports of. Uh, well, not Sony, Sony not ports. So, uh, so the all the canceled Sony multiplayer games. I should be specific. Uh, where Cult basically said that uh, Xbox canceled things like Starbound and closed Licton eight years later, and hired devs and studios. Uh, we need the whole industry to thrive. Which, yeah, I can kind of agree with that. But also, this is Cult Eastwood, and quite honestly, Gold Eastwood's brain is very green mush at this point so yeah but x vault gaming is not much better with a horizon multiplayer has not been cancelled deviation were independent they took the decision themselves to shut down even playstation is hiring devs for their studios redfall should have been cancelled and again i agree that redfall should have been cancelled personally because i agree with the devs that the redfall just had no fucking direction and was very bad, but at the same time, just because they haven't canceled a specifically certain multiplayer games does not mean that does not knit negate all of the canceled multiplayer games that they had, including the Spider Man Greatest Web, which they actually had a trailer and stuff made for, and yet dropped it and stuff like that, and even dropped it out of the the factions to try to break it off into its own game for whatever reason. So, like, hmm. And, of course, the next one's up is Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the is one of the best-looking open-world games, and it's not even close. And then he says that Horizon Forbidden West would like a word, to which I then have to say, no, 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 no. Elden Ring would like to have a word. And, yes, that is my character with the giant hat of... Um, Ronnie, uh, and I did end up getting the Age of Fracture, for those of you who noticed it. Uh, I was just really dumb. I'm going to go through Journey 2 to get a better ending. Don't worry. Working on it. But it's probably going to be another 100 hours, so don't hold your breath. I wanted to beat it before the DLC came out. Anyway, but yes. Obviously, with some of that cancelled stuff and going kind of off on the same boat, I guess. We then have uh, someone with Savage uh, 1009 uh, with an imagine a Venom boss where he's throwing you through buildings, smashing into, into the subway. We were robbed, bro. And this was talking about the dev footage that came out by from the Spider-Man 
uh, thing. I don't know where this specifically came out. It might have been like leaks from the Insomniac leak a while back. Unsure. But it is quite interesting if you've seen this clip that how they, even with like the boxy textures and like the unfinished animations and things, how cool of an idea that would have been had they gone through with it. To which someone then responds with, did you want the game to come out three years later? And I think that a lot of people can agree with a yes because of how it came out initially. And quite honestly, to even go further off of that of people trying to defend Insomniac for whatever reason, Mitch the Chips comes in with a, I hate how people quickly forget there was a citywide chase slash fight with two bosses, Sandman and Lizard, the guys budget is already the game's budget is already over 300 million and can't keep adding more of this without sacrificing time money and game performance la mal both of those fights were very very cinematic and didn't have a lot of the actual city destruction and the actual city destruction that was seen wasn't the best i mean again in my personal opinion still one of the best uses of destruction of even just like buildings in general that's dynamic and interesting and fun is uh the finals and quite honestly season two has been super fun to play and i have been enjoying it myself but moving on someone says here with a J- someone by the name of james goes with a spider-man fans for real ruin everything y'all doing everything to make this game seem like it was bad and it wasn't I mean, that's a nice opinion you got there, but I personally think that the game wasn't the best. It could have been better, and it could have been, you know, made more impactful. I mean, again, it it was nominated for, like, what, eight awards at the Game Awards, which don't put much stock in the Game Awards. I'm just using this as a stupid, dumb, fun example. Uh, so, yeah, but uh, it didn't, it wasn't spectacular. It was okay. Like, I'm not going to say that it was bad. It just, again, I played the first one and it didn't grab me. Same thing with Horizon Zero Dawn. Didn't grab me. Someone then by the name of that generic Eric says, when you are an X-Bot, you are forced to turn lies and downplay games all because you chose the wrong platform and 100,000 port beggars weren't enough to get Sony to port the game just to get a PS5. And this is talking about, of course, about the um, the petition to bring Helldivers 2 to uh, the PlayStation, which, or no, not the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, my mistake. But look, you say that, and yet when PlayStation fanboys do the exact same fucking thing with, say, Starfield, and then demand for it to happen, like, and it doesn't, like, what the fuck? And if it does in the future, that's whatever. But, like, the petitions don't do anything, really. They just are there for those people who feel like they want to do something. It's like a... I believe it's like a slacktivism thing. Plus, it's also one of those things where it, it's, it, it wouldn't have happened anyway because we all know Sony. And at the same time, like... Microsoft themselves have already been shown to be open to bringing their games to other platforms and games that they have purchased to other platforms that mainly should have came across with Minecraft, but I guess we're still learning that lesson over and over again. Next up, of course, we got uh, KJing, K, KJN Gamer. I think that I'm pronouncing it correctly. With a Helldivers 2 should be on Xbox. Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth should have been multi-platform. Rise of the Ronin looks like a PS3 game. STFU. The people who say this moan about games on Twitter more than actually playing games. No, I, I think some of them do, but not everyone. I mean, I, I think personally that Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth should have been multi-platform because, again, it was... While it was a contracted thing, it is a contracted third-party exclusivity deal, which sucks because, again, to go off of that, uh, didn't Square Enix lose, like, a butt-ton of money because of their exclusivity deal with Sony for whatever reason? Like, I don't know, it just seems very odd to me. 
and Sony also lost like ten billion ish dollars or ten million or something like that. I forget specifically. And Right of the Ronin is one of those games where it looks old and it looks like styled in that sort of ps3 type of era but that's not the bad thing if you used it as like a negative graphics aren't everything i think that playing the game looks good and i think that the game looks fine and stylized in the way that it is and helldivers 2 should have the biggest amount of success that it can with uh and if porting it to xbox would make it a bigger success which we all know that it would uh so like you know Seems kind of obvious. And all those tweets can kind of be summed up with this unleashed tweet. With him saying, quote, The undeniable truth. Sony a- Xbox fans. But you cannot deny the fact. Oh, sorry, Xbox fans. But you cannot deny the facts. And, of course, it's PlayStation being better than Xbox. And, you know, it's not a fact. It's it's more of an opinion. But uh, continuing on. Now, this is a quick little interesting one where Tipster says, One PC gamer isn't everyone. Most PC gamers don't buy games, which, uh, no. Not only is it funny that I didn't even need to really say anything because someone uh, by the name of Scarlet also said, uh, Oh, yeah, but we don't buy games, I guess, with uh, them having a butt ton of games. I mean, I've been, I mean, in my personal library, a bunch of my games I've bought for a long time uh, for a lot i mean i've bought collections of games for like 15 20 dollars for like five games i've also like been gifted games for people who have been very generous with their money and time and also i've won gifted games from like sweepstakes and stuff and those ones don't necessarily count but at the same time like we still buy them and also the sales numbers that you guys use with the concurrent player counts and the overall player counts on Steam, each one of those people that gets monitored by that site is a purchase of your fucking game. Like, legitimately, legitimately, sincerely, yes, We do buy games, and the majority of PC gamers do buy games. So, yeah. Next up, of course, we got an interesting Japan Hates Xbox tweet with a hashtag PlayStation Girls versus hashtag Xbox Girls, which do you prefer? With, of course, this being more of a quote-unquote meme with uh, two pretty generally... uh, attractive females for the PlayStation side with two other pictures of it. And I think one of them is a cosplay of a trans person. I forget specifically um, for at the Xbox side. And look, I don't know. I don't know where else to put this. So this is just going to have to be here. Obviously this is Japan hates Xbox and we don't need to, you know, elaborate on anything more there. Just take the, the non-joke there and understand that this is not a good take chief next up of course we got mr hates 60 fps which is quite interesting because he says look at what i'll be playing on my ps3 in three more days with a hashtag playstation portal uh this is of course talking about hi-fi rush being ported over and i don't even really need to say anything for this next thing all i need to say is just look at what Blau can do, or Blow, Blue, Blue. Look at what this person Blue can do on the Steam at deck right now. Like, without needing an extra purchase of a console. I, I mean, like, you know. Oh, but, like, you guys had those exclusives and you can't monitor about that. It's like, okay. So when PlayStation gets pissy over. You know, their exclusives coming out, like, that's, like, that's okay to those PlayStation guys. But if we want to kind of clap back and make it a meme on you guys, that's a bad thing. Like, on the PlayStation side, like, that's a bad thing. Again, like, this is all jokes. Don't take it too seriously, guys, and also don't send hate. But continuing on with that hi-fi rush hate train or love train i guess saying xbox games will never come to playstation with a very interesting jack black gesture 
to that, obviously, I'm going to clown on both of these saying that, you know, yes, it was the fact that Xbox games would never come to PlayStation. But at the same time, I still use the example of Minecraft, how Minecraft Java edition was brought uh, to, into a, like a bedrock edition, and then the bedrock edition was brought to fucking everywhere, including PlayStation. And I always bring up the fact that PlayStation was the last one to get crossplay. So it's like, you know, whatever. But again, it's also just really funny how they continue to say that Hi Fi Rush, which they, I think about like two years ago when it originally came out, said was a bad small game that didn't deserve the hype and praise that it was getting. And now they are hyping and, and praising this uh, this game. So, uh, you know, quite the uh, quite the change of pace. Now, of course, we have uh, this one with the uh, with Nick Marcelle, which I again don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's uh, Nicola. If you didn't know, you can tell by the profile picture with the most soy jackiest, d- just absolutely worst YouTube type reaction faces you can bring and muster with the hi-fi rush on PlayStation and of course the good old finger but with then he someone clapping back saying that Xbox first party games are the most wanted games we all know that with the fact that you know I can't disagree with that because not only Hi-Fi Rush coming to there, but Sea of Thieves was one of the first ones. And just based off of pre-orders, it became one of the top games on PlayStation being sold like that week that it came out. So it's like, you know, they're pretty desirable if you know how to do it good. And it's like, hmm, I do wonder why most of these fanboys are the people that I make fun of. Hmm, Interesting. And of course, next up, we've got... um, this one with the Chaos Lounge. Chaos Lounge? I think that's correct. Uh, saying, dude spent months crap- crapping on pl- Starfield. Continues to beg for Starfield. You cannot make this up. With uh, uh, rumors of a Gears collection in Halo 5 Infinite. Uh, touted as PS5 Pro launch titles. With the whole slate being hashtagged. As well as Zubby Tech. Also then saying Starfield for PS5 and PlayStation Pro could launch at the same time saying that the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to have a launch title of Starfield, even though the Pro is the same a lot of the PlayStation base console, and also, also, that we'll get into the specs in a bit, but, um, you know, again, they they basically said, don't take this as we're going to port all of our games, Just some of them, you know, just some of them. And the four are the only ones that you're going to get consistently. I remember when bait used to be believable. And um, if you want some actual believable bait here, um, here's a couple of things of more interesting bait type stuff. Saying, Court, if you don't play a game for the sole reason that it's only 30 FPS, you're not a gamer, deal with it. Remember when bait used to be believable? You know, remember those days when you could get away with some interesting trolling? Those are the days Pepperidge Farm remembers. I mean, if you want a good example of actual really good bait here, someone says, I can't, uh, someone by the name of Carbonjit, Karium Joven says, I can't believe he did this to the PlayStation 5 with this guy opening up his PlayStation 5 by dunking it in his fucking tub. And let me be clear here. Let me understand this. And let me just, you know, make this very, very clear. This is obviously bait for hate views. And the fact that some people are taking this not only seriously, but also the fact that some people are, like, genuinely upset about this shows you that that's how you do good bait. You know? That's how you do it. Anyway, to go off to the next bit here, we have the PlayStation 5 Pro was reportedly expected to release holiday 2024 with a bunch of the specs that I will have listed right here via screen time. 
who retweets it via Insider Gaming IG. So, you know, again, read that in your own time. It's not that interesting. And to be quite honest, most people have been talking about this. Uh, but starting off with the Xbox Next is the more powerful than the PlayStation 5 Pro and PS6, which, I mean, is the Xbox Next even a th- thing? I'm kind of out of the loop with that and don't really care to look it up. Leave it down in the comments if you actually, you know, understand this and if it's true. I don't believe so, but quite honestly, I- I'm a PC guy. I, I don't, again, care. But, I mean, I'll heart your comment, and I like it, because, you know, I like reading the comments sometimes. Next up, we've got, they are delusional with the, nah, that new PS5 Pro will be beat. Xbox won't be the most powerful console anymore, looking at those specs. And, you know what? Both y'all are stupid. Equally so. And, quite honestly, I don't really have much more to say on that, because they're getting towards the end of the video, and I just kind of want to get through this. Of course, then we got big old Mr. King Thrash Gaming with uh, the PS5 Pro combined with the Xbox Series S will cause third-party developers to skip Xbox even more than they do now. Which, um, I'd love to see your insider representation or explanation as to why. I mean, it sounds like it sounds like a very serious thing that, that the developers should try to optimize their game to the best of their ability, you know. Just seems like a thing that they should do. Now, next up, we've got uh, PMS Jordan and uh, Retro, totally not Retro here, with um, only a 10% UP- CPU overclock bottleneck confirmed, and the PS5 Pro is a 4080. Talk, talk died down real quick, and this is again from Insider Gaming with like the CPU, uh, saying that it's a 10% increase over the standard console, which. Let me be clear, a 10% increase is not insignificant by any means, at least in terms of processing power overall, but in terms of a mid-console refresh, that's that's pretty average, I guess. But again, it's like, that's not good. <laughs> like, that's not good, but it's not bad. It's more of just... it's. I don't know how to put this. And, and again... This is like all like oh they make it a, a, a substantially of course obtuse in this context because of that reason and of course we got the good old blue here coming back with the ponies after the PS5 Pro specs saying when the PS5 Pro drops in November we'll be able to play games as you could in 2020 you just wait just you wait with uh you know just a really good meme in general and I don't really have to add much more of anything to that and I think that this pretty much sums up. The rest of that whole thing. I did want to talk about this one last bit here with good old Dean Takahashi. Now, if you don't know who Dean Takahashi is, or you think that name sounds vaguely familiar, this is the same Dean Takahashi who made the now infamous video of him going off and trying to complete the tutorial level of Cuphead and failing miserably. We've all seen the clip. If you haven't, you can literally look it up. But he says that the whole notion of Gamergate 2.0 and woke politics, running, ruining gaming and gaming VCs funding bad titles, believes the fact of those who control the industry. Belials the fact of those who control the industry. Women-led companies currently get about 2% of all venture capital funding. The powers that be are white men. Now, we're going to just bar some of the facts that, like, men are in those positions because of various other factors of being better, of being more risk-taking and stuff like that. And we're just going to say, for the sake of this, that I don't trust anything this person says because he, again, was the person that wasn't able to even beat Cuphead. And I guess I don't think that he knows and just... Because of that, I don't really trust his opinion on gaming. Because, again, he's also a gaming journalist. Now, I'm not going to say whether or not I agree with the whole Gamer Grant 2.0 thing. But, I mean, when you can get me and Harmon Smith, of all people, to kind of dunk on you, 
you kind of know that you kind of know that you fucked up just a little bit. Anyway, I know this was a much longer video, but I had a lot of tweets to get through, and to be quite honest, this is probably going to be one for a little bit. And again, I don't think I'm going to keep you too much longer. I do want to say thank you all so much for watching. If you made it this far into the video, I love you and I appreciate everything that you do for me. My name is GamePenguin21. Again, if you like what it is that I do and want to see me do more of it, subscribe, like, comment, do all that good stuff. Follow me on the Twitch. Follow me on the other stuff. Get some of my music down in the description, all of which is very helpful, and I appreciate all of you. Uh, so, yeah, let's see if we can hit 1K by the end of the year. Anyway, again, like I said before, thank you very, very much for watching, and a peace. Off.